Hey guys, so today we're going to be starting our second unit. And if you remember from the first unit, we kind of moved in a very regional pattern. We looked at what was going on at the Civil War in the South. We looked at the West, the really different than the East. Now, if you kind of picked up on this from the year one, there were going to be a lot of problems created with all of this change after the Civil War. And in this next unit, we're going to call it the Progressive Era. So what the whole goal is during this time frame is we're going to make progress to fix these new problems that arose during this after the Civil War period in all of these regions. So if you go back to the South and you think about problems that they had in the South, okay, you think about what were conditions like for African Americans. Um, conditions were pretty bad. After that compromise in 1877, you would see segregation laws come about. So they're going to separate blacks and whites in public spaces. Then you're going to see disenfranchisement. They're going to attack that right to vote with poll taxes and grandfather clauses, literacy tests. Okay, and then they're going to have violence. Any of those other things didn't work. They're going to use violence to control the African American population to feel like a second crisis. So, within your notes, if you would just kind of write a blur for me about what conditions look like in your opinion, okay, and in your own words, and what type of political reforms they might want. Now, what we're going to specifically talk about today is we're going to talk about two guys that are going to come in and try to fix these problems. Fix these problems that African Americans are facing in the South. Now, the first of these is going to be Booker T. Washington. Now, Booker T. Washington, he was born a slave in the South, so he's well accustomed with Southern culture and the way the South operates. So he's going to look at equality in a much more slow sense. His argument is going to be. If African Americans want equality, what they're going to have to do is one, they're going to have to go get a skill. They're going to have to go get educated at a skill. So we call that vocational education. We focus on um, skills like farming and skills like being a blacksmith or being an iron worker. He wants them to be very well skilled so they can command higher wages, so they can have a little bit more economic power. Now, after they get that economic power, he understands that this is going to be a process. So what he wants African Americans to do is after they get economic power and they prove themselves to white society, he feels like those political rights, the right to vote and that segregation, all of those things will start to crumble away eventually, and African Americans will have full rights in American society. Now, he's obviously going to have critics because there's a lot of people that want equality right now. And one of his most outspoken critics is going to be W.E.B. Boyce. So the Boyce was a little different. He had a different background. He, one, was born in the North. Two, he was born free. And he was college educated. He didn't just go get a vocational education and learn a skill. He went and got a full college traditional education. So what he's going to do is he's going to make the criticism of Booker T. Washington. He's going to say, if we focus only on gaining economic rights, we're never going to be able to gain those either. Because white society is going to so many hurdles for us that we're not going to be able to get those high paying jobs. So what African Americans need to focus on first in Du Bois's opinion is they need to focus on those political rights. Now, how are you going to go about getting political rights? He wants to focus on what we call a talented tip. He thinks that 10% of every subgroup in the population is extremely talented and extremely smart. So he wants the talented 10th, the 10% 10 of the African American community to go get a traditional college education, to go get exceptionally educated, over educated, so they can go and fight for those political rights immediately. So his thought is if we get political rights, then all of the other rights, economic rights, all of these other things are going to come after. And we can force these rights to happen because we now have those political freedoms. So I like to look at it kind of like a graphic organizer. Okay, so on your on your PowerPoint, you will have this side of it. Washington. And this side will be Du Bois. 
Now, if you don't know the way I did diagram works, we're going to put the differences in either side and we're going to put the similarities in the middle. Okay? So this is going to kind of synthesize the material we just talked about. Okay? So, first, Washington. He's going to advocate for a gradual equality. Okay? He says, I understand the limitations of society. And I know that if we try to get equality all at once, it's just not going to happen. Now, the boys, on the other hand, he says, of course it's not going to happen. You're not demanding it. So he advocates for it, demanding an immediate equality. Now, if you see on your uh, on your copy of this, you should just be able to type it in. Okay? When it says click here, you should be able to type it in. Now, how is Washington going to attain his equality? He says we need to focus first on getting skills so we're valuable to society. So he wants African Americans to get educated in vocations. He wants them to get well versed in the vocations, right? Now, with this vocational education, what he's going to do is he's going to say, Economic gains for African Americans. So if we can prove that we are going to be financially valuable to white society, that will eventually lead to political rights. They will view us as valuable members and they're going to give us rights. Now, Du Bois completely disagrees. He says, if you only focus on skills, you're never going to have the tools or the power to fight against them and to gain your political rights. So he's going to focus on the traditional education. And it's only going to be for a specific portion. It's going to be for what he calls the talented tip. He said this talented tip is going to gain the rights for everyone else. Now, Looking at their backgrounds, their backgrounds have something to do with the way they feel about things. In Washington, background, he was from the South, he was born a slave. So he was more likely to see the limitations that society was placing on African Americans. Du Bois, on the other hand, he was born in the North, and he was born free. So he is not going to see the constraints of society that Washington is experiencing. Now, there's going to be ways that they have similarities. Now, one thing that's really important is both of these men are taken legitimate by the African American community because they're both going to be African Americans. They're both going to be African Americans. It's very easy to listen to both of those because African Americans know that both men, whether they were born in the North or born in the South, understand their struggle. Another thing is they are both advocating for education. They think education is a way out of some of these problems. Now, it's going to be different types of education, but they both buy into education. Now, the main goal that both of them have is they want to fix those problems that were created in that post reconstruction south, so they want to advocate for equality. They want racial equality. They want their races to be treated equally. Now, this chart here should help you with your assignment, and I would love for you guys to email me, get in credit with me if you need any help with anything, uh, just let you know what you need. Have a great day.